Hello everyone. Welcome back to the Microbial Engineering and Algal Biotechnology Laboratory, Department of Biotechnology, JIS University, Kolkata. Today, the conceptualized deliberation will be done by Dr. Dipankar Ghosh and the topic will be COVID-19 and secondary infection scenario, a mutualistic or antagonistic approach. So let's begin the journey of this lecture deliberation, very interesting topic on COVID-19 and secondary infection scenario. First of all, I would like to acknowledge to all my me Brumi, especially the group 2 in charge, PhD research scholar Mr. Shomnath Dash and all the MSc research project students, namely Shomalia, Shayantoni, Dishani, Somashri, Pamela, Pail, Debraj and Joita for their immense support and providing lots of information literature survey to make this project happen. So let's begin the journey on COVID-19 as an overview. COVID-19 is an acute respiratory disease which is being caused by the novel coronavirus SARS-CoV-2 also known as 2019-NCOV. Coronaviruses are members of the subfamily Orthocoronaviridae in the family of Coronaviridae and the order of Nidovirals. According to its phylogenetic relationships and the genomic structures, the COVID-19 belongs to genera beta coronaviruses. The human beta coronaviruses SARS-CoV-2, SARS-CoV and MERS-CoV have many similarities and identities. 79% sequence identity to SARS-CoV and 50% to MERS-CoV has been observed but also have differences, dissimilarities in their genomic and the phenotypic structures that can influence their pathogenesis. Overview on the COVID-19, the second segment. The COVID-19 is a novel coronavirus, is a new strain that has not been previously identified in humans, with an outbreak of unusual viral pneumonia in Wuhan, China, and then becomes pandemic. COVID-19 contains single-stranded positive sense RNA, ribonucleic acid, which is being associated with the nucleoprotein within a capsid compromised of the matrix protein. A typical COVID-19 19 contains a six ORF open reading frames in its genome. All the structural and accessory proteins are translated from the SG RNAs, the single guided RNA of the COVs. Four main structural proteins are encoded by ORF 10 and 11 on the one third of the genome, nearly the three terminus end. Coronaviruses are zoonotic in nature, meaning they are transmitted between the animals and the human community. Originating from bats can infect mammals and can also cause severe respiration disease in the human. Detailed investigations has also found that the SARS-CoV-2 was transmitted from the kyvet cats to the human and MERS-CoV from the dromedary camels to the human. Several known coronaviruses are circulating in animals that have not yet infected humans. The genetic and the phenotypic structures of the COVID-19 in pathogenesis is very, very important. So this is the typical data which has been obtained from the research square, a meta-analysis of 2019 novel coronavirus showing the clinical characteristics and salient features which is being observed in the infected patients as on the April 8, 2020. Now what about the molecular representations of the and the, and the physiology of the COVID-19. The structure of COVID-19, SARS-CoV-2, consists of the following specific proteins. A spike protein denoted as S, the hemagglutinin esterase dimer that is designated as HE protein, a membrane glycoprotein that is M, and an envelope protein encoded or abbreviated as E protein, and a nucleocapsid protein abbreviated as N, and they have a genomic positive strand ribonucleic acid as a genomic material. The total length of the genome is 30 kilo base pair, consisting of the five terminus non-coding region and open reading frame ORF 1A or B coding regions. S region encoding the spike glycoprotein, S protein, E region encoding the envelope, E protein, M region has been encoded the membrane protein, M protein, N region encoding the nucleocapsid, N protein and the three terminal non-coding region. The, there are so many different kinds of receptors protein are there. The S protein on the surface of the coronavirus can also recognize the blind, the receptor and host cell through the 
platyrrhine mediated endocytosis so this is the nice genomic arrangement and their overview which shows how spike protein membrane protein envelope protein and nucleocapsid they are arranged within the surface and interior section of the covid-19 SARS-CoV-2 coronavirus so these are the interconnection of the protein which are being associated in the pathogenesis there are so many accessory proteins for the place of RNA synthesis, viral particle assembly, host cell reprogramming and lot of nuclear capsid proteins are there which has been cleaved by the ORF1 AB by NSP5 and NSP3. Similar way virial structural proteins are also there which has been encoded by different open reading frames starting from 7A, 7B, 7.3 and 3A, 3B, F6, uh, NSP8, ORF8, ORF10, ORF9B similarly and also so many other nuclear associated proteins or accessory proteins are there which plays an important role in the viral RLA protection as well and also encoding replicase specific enzymes. So this is the host response towards the SARS-CoV-2. It has already been discussed in detail in our previous channel associated videos. So please go on through that one for the detail clarification how the host response to SARS-CoV-2 has been taken place. Then what about the secondary infection and COVID-19? How COVID-19 influencing several secondary infection in the human community? A secondary infection can occur when a different infection known as the primary infection makes a person more susceptible to the disease. It is called a secondary infection because it occurs either after or because of another infection. Some diseases that can alter the effectiveness and efficacy of the human system. It can make it easier for the secondary infection to get into the body. Co-infection has been also reported in patients with severe acute respiration syndrome SARS and the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome. But there is a limited knowledge on the co-infection among the patient with coronavirus disease 2019, that is so-called the COVID-19. The prevalence of the co-infection was variable, they altering a lot among the COVID-19 patients in different studies. However, it could be up to 50% among the all non-survivors. The co-pathogen, including colonization of the common multi-drug resistance nosocomial pathogen bacteria such as the Streptococcus pneumoniae, Staphylococcus aureus, Klebsiella pneumoniae, and Mycoplasma pneumoniae, uh, Chlamydia pneumoniae, Lingolena pneumonophila, uh, Acetobacter uh, bomani, Candida species, and Aspergillus well-known flavors, and several other viruses like influenza virus, coronavirus, rhinovirus, enterovirus, para-influenza virus, meta-pneumovirus, influenza B virus, and immunodeficiency viruses are there, which actually get included in the colonization of the multi-drug resistance nosocomial disorder or dysfunction. So let's talk about the influenza A. Influenza A virus was one of the most common co-infective viruses which may have caused the initial false negative results of the real-time reverse transcriptase polymerase chain PCR reaction for the severe acute respiration syndrome coronavirus SARS-CoV-2. The recognition of the SARS-CoV-2 infection is very primordial importance as it enables the implication of the appropriate infection control measures and also possibly providing the promising antiviral therapy. But clinicians should not neglect the possibility of the SARS-CoV-2 co-infection occurrence. So what about the impact of secondary co-infection on the COVID-19? The secondary bacterial infection is an important complication of the viral infection and is associated with serious outcomes, especially in the influenza. Until now, although several studies have investigated the epidemiological and clinical manifestation of the coronavirus diseases 2019, infection regarding information regarding the secondary bacterial infections are also very limited. The incident of the secondary bacterial infection in the COVID-19 is very low. It does not support the common antibiotic prophylaxis, especially the broad-spectrum drug users. Active disinfection of environmental surfaces is significant in reducing the risk of the infection which has already been caused by the multi-drug resistance nosocomial pathogen. So now on the right-hand side, you can see a nice pictorial presentation how infectiveness 
peaked at the 0.7 days uh, before the upset or onset of the symptom. Similar way, it actually make a correlation between the infection period which has been started from 2 to 3 days before the onset of the symptoms in the primary case. Now let's begin the discussion about what are the impacts of the comorbidity. So what is comorbidity? Comorbidity means more than one disease or condition is present in the same person at the same time. In presence of one or more additional conditions often co-occurring with the primary condition. Comorbidity also describes the effect of all other conditions an individual patient might have other than the primary conditions of interest and also can be physiological or it could be the psychological disorders. The presence of more than one disorder in same person, for example, if you consider if a person is diagnosed with both the social anxiety disorder SAD and, and, and major depressive disorder MDD, they are said to have comorbid meaning coexisting anxiety and depression or depressive disorders. Now what about the comorbidities associated with the COVID-19 then how COVID-19 make an impact on the comorbidity related issues. Since November 2019 the rapid outbreak of the coronavirus disease 2019 COVID-19 which arose from several acute respiratory syndrome coronaviruses 2 SARS-CoV-2 infection has been recently become a public health emergency situation of the international concern in all around the globe. According to the latest report, the clinical manifestations of the COVID-19 are heterogeneous. On admission of 20 to 51 percent of patients were reported as having at least one comorbidity with diabetes 10 to 20 percent, hypertension belongs to 10 to 15 percent and other cardiovascular or the cerebrovascular disease uh, belongs to 7 to 40 percent being most common. The previous studies have demonstrated that the presence of any comorbidity has been associated with 3.4 fold increased risk of the developing acute respiratory distress syndrome in the patient with the H1, uh, H7N9 infection as well. As an influenza, SARS CoV and Middle East Respiration Syndrome coronavirus, MERS CoV, and COVID 19 is more readily predisposed to respiratory failure and death in the susceptible patients. However, patients with the comorbidities have more deteriorating outcomes compared with the patient without. The COVID-19 patient with the history of hypertension, obesity, chronic lung disease and diabetes, cardiovascular disorders have the worst prognosis and often end up with the deteriorating outcomes such as ARDS and pneumonia. Also, the elderly or aged patient in long-term care facilities and chronic kidney disease patients and cancer patients are not only at risk for contracting the virus, but there is a significantly increased risk of death among these groups of patients. Now, this is the nice pictorial presentation which actually showing about the prevalence of the comorbidity on the COVID-19 in Germany. Data from the LEOS registry distribution comorbidity in clinical trial phases in which has been done within the population of 354 patients and also ongoing cases are not included in this graph which is based on the 14th April 2020 data set which shows that the comorbidity which is being associated with COVID-19 shows the highest kind of appearance for the green bar that is the heart and the circulatory issues. Now what about the, as we talked about in the previous uh, session that the old ages are more susceptible to the coronavirus than why? The older age people, the people of any age, even children can catch COVID-19 but it most commonly affects the middle-aged or the older adults. The risk of developing dangerous symptoms increases with the age. With those who are age 85 older than the high risk of serious symptoms even an, for example, in United States, about 80% of the death from the disease have been reported in people age which is lies or above the 65 years. Now these are the different types of comorbidity graphs in the part diagram, part diagram. You can see how age distribution is related with the susceptibility towards the COVID-19. The similar way, this nice diagrammatic presentation have also shown that how people are getting susceptible to COVID-19. Number one important section is the lungs problem. The chronic 
obstructive pulmonary disease COVID or the lung cancer cystic fibrosis pulmonary fibrosis and moderate to severe asthma these are the major uh, associated diseases uh, and people those who are susceptible highly susceptible to covid 19 infection second patient those having the heart diseases likely the cardiomyopathy or the pulmonary hypertension congenital heart diseases heart failure or the coronary artery diseases similar way the person who belongs to the immunocompromised patient those having high possibility to get susceptible towards the COVID-19 it including uh, the organ transplant cancer treatment bone marrow transplant long-term uses of the similar drug that weaken your immune system the patient who have been suffering with the HIV or AIDS and chronic kidney or the liver diseases so this is the nice presentation which shows how people get susceptible to COVID-19 and what are the associated complications and the disease mechanism in patients with COVID-19 coronavirus infection. Now, why do this category of people are more susceptible to COVID-19? That is a very, very burning and alarming question at the current scenario. This COVID-19 is not just about one disease. It is also has an effect on various organs of the human body. The coronavirus disease SARS-CoV-2-19 is the illness being caused by the SARS-CoV-2 virus. The older adults are the people of any age who have serious medical complicated conditions including people with the liver diseases might be at the higher risk of severe illness from the COVID-19 infection. People with the chronic liver disease, kidney or the lung disease can also be get highly susceptible to COVID-19 severity. Then let's talk about the liver disease and which is being associated with the COVID-19 infective patients. The new international study has found that the increased mortality rates from the COVID-19 among people with the chronic liver diseases and has called for the patient with the worsening liver function to be tested for the coronavirus. The some patient who have been hospitalized for COVID-19 have had increased levels of liver enzyme like alanine aminotransferase abbreviated as ALT and aspartate aminotransferase abbreviated as AST that indicate their livers at least temporarily damaged and also the liver damage is more common in patients who have severe COVID-19 disease or their pathogenesis. Recent reports have also shown that 2 to 11 percent of patients with the COVID-19 had underlying chronic liver diseases. Experience from the previous SARS epidemic suggests that the 60 percent of patients who develop various degrees of liver damage and their associated symptoms. In the current COVID-19 pandemic, the hepatic dysfunction has seen in 14 to 53 percent of patients, particularly in those with severe disease. Cases of acute liver injury have also been reported which have been associated with high mortality rates. COVID-19 itself and or the use of hepatotoxic drugs might negatively affect the course and the management of patients with the pre-existing chronic liver diseases. However, the greatest effect of COVID-19 on the liver disease will be indirect or delayed or resulting from the impeding global economic crisis. Due to the phylogenetic resemblance, it is also being possible that the SARS-CoV-2 also causes the liver injury. Hepatic involvement in COVID-19 could be multifactorial effects related to any one of the direct psychopathic effects of the viruses. Uncontrolled immune reactions, sepsis or the drug-induced liver injury can also be the secondary symptoms. The postulated mechanism, the molecular mechanism of viral entry is through the host ACE2 receptor that are abundantly present in the type 2 alveolar cells. Interestingly, the expression of the ACE2 receptor were identified in the gastrointestinal tract as well as vascular endothelial and the cholangiocytes of the liver cells. It is also possible that the hepatic dysfunction may occur as a result of cytokine storm that due to the direct cytopathic effect. Zhu et al. reported that the first co-mortem the post-mortem finding of the patient scrambled a severe COVID-19. In this study, they have found that the liver histology revealed the moderate microvascular striosis, mild inflammatory infiltrates of the hepatic lobules and the portal tract. 
In addition, the peripheral blood examination has also shown that the significantly reduced the but the hyperreactive CD4 CD8 cells in the pro-inflammatory state with increased CCR6 plus T helper 17 CD4 T cells and cytotoxicity granulations of the CD8 cells which may also contribute to the hepatocellular dysfunction. Immunohistochemistry studies shown that the KI proliferative index of the the, the hepatocytes in the SARS-CoV-2 was much higher than the chronic hepatitis C infection and the liver regeneration. Liver transplant recipient with COVID-19 have been reported recently in current studies. The similar way this particular nice pictorial presentation has showed that how, how does the liver disease being associated with the COVID-19. COVID-19 causes pneumonia but hepatic dysfunction can also occur in severe cases and several being associated with the fatal outcome and cases of several acute liver injury has been also being reported with the higher mortality larger studies with long term follow up are required to characterize the extent of the liver damage in COVID-19 patient. The effects of the COVID-19 on underlying chronic liver disease requires a detailed evaluation and currently data set are lacking and further research is warranted in this particular area of research. Now what about the liver abnormality has been found in the SARS-CoV-2 infection. SARS-CoV-2 was a major pandemic in 2003 and hepatic dysfunction was described in the patient with the SARS. Up to 10% of the patient had underlying chronic liver disease, particularly the chronic hepatitis B, probably due to the geographical location where the SARS primarily occurred. Over 50% of patients developed abnormal liver function tests and most mild and the majority has been recovered. However, in some studies, elevated liver function tests were associated with the severe disease and in particular with the high ALT induced ICU and death. This raised possibility of SARS causing liver dysfunction rather than a simple association. Middle Eastern Respiratory Symptom MARS, is being caused by the Middle Eastern Respiratory Syndrome coronavirus. The first case was reported in 2012 in Saudi Arabia. Unlike SARS cov SARS-CoV-2 MERS-CoV utilizes dipeptidyl transferase 4 that is called dipeptidyl peptidase 4 DPP4 as the cell entry receptor abundantly found in the liver cells. Low albumin was found to be an independent predator of several MERS-CoV infection. The liver biopsy in the MERS patients have shown that the lobular lymphocytic infiltration and the mild hydrophic degeneration of the hepatocytes the MERS non-survivors had higher incident of liver injury than the survivors 91.3 percent versus 77.9 percent respectively the mortality was higher in patient with the comorbidities now the next question comes how the kidney diseases are being associated with the covid 19 people with a kidney transplant need to take anti-rejection medicine also known as the immunosuppressive medicine or drugs this medicine works by keeping the immune system less active which can make it harder to fight infection. So this is the nice pictorial presentation which shows that how COVID-19 related collapsing the glomerulopathy in the kidney transplant recipient has shown. How does then kidney diseases associated with the COVID-19? Kidney injury is frequent in patients with the novel coronavirus diseases. According to the second hint hypothesis, these forms of acute glomerulopathy may be this uh, predisposed to occur with the general or the genetic background of the high risk genotyping of the apolipoprotein L1 that is apo L1 gene revealed that the donor carried the low risk ZO and Z2 genotype this case illustrate that the COVID-19 may promote a collapsing uh, glomerulopathy in the kidney allograft with the low risk apo L1 genotype in absence of the detectable SARS-CoV-2 RNA in the kidney cells and that the pedocyte injury may proceed the SARS-CoV-2 RNA MIA. Kidney cells are targeted by severe acute uh, respiration syndrome coronavirus 2 thereby causing kidney lesions and viral RNA has been detected in various kidney compartments of the patient who died of COVID-19 including the glomeruli. Critically, the pedocyte expresses the, the membrane proteins such as the agglutensin converting enzyme AC2 that are considered to facilitate the SARS-CoV-2 entry within the kidney cells. 
Consequently, the SARS-CoV-2 could have a preferential tropism for the glomerular cells and the pedocyte injury occurring upon the SARS-CoV-2 infection may result in the collapsing glomerulopathy in the naive kidney cells. However, the presence of the virus in the glomerular cells have never been formally demonstrated in the living patient. Thus, the mechanism by which the SARS-CoV-2 infection promotes the glomerular injury is an unresolved issue and the problem. Histological findings in the kidney allograft are similar to those observed in the naive kidneys of the patient with COVID-19 infection. The mechanism by which the glomeruli are injured in the context of COVID-19 infections are completely unknown and whether the virus directly promotes the pedocyte injury or indirectly via the activation of the antiviral immunity or both remains to be established by doing lots of research in coming or upcoming years. Lung diseases and the COVID-19. COVID-19 is a lung disease caused by a novel coronavirus first detected in the late 2019. COVID-19 and its symptoms can range from mild to severe attack. Anyone can get COVID-19, but some individuals are more at risk of severe disease symptoms that, than the others. There is currently no specific treatment other than the, the supportive or the suppressive care available. The COVID-19. The disease caused by the novel coronavirus can cause lung complications such as pneumonia, severe pneumonia and in, in, in most severe cases acute respiration distress syndrome or ARDS followed by the sepsis. Another possible complication that has been associated or implicated by the COVID-19 infection can also cause the lasting harm to the lungs, alveoli cells and other organs as well. In pneumonia, the lungs become filled with fluid and flamed, leading to breathing difficulties and some people's breathing problem can become severe enough to require treatment at the hospital with providing oxygen supply or even a ventilator. The pneumonia that COVID-19 causes tend to take hold in both lungs, air sac in the lungs filled with the fluid leading to the limiting their ability to take to oxygen and causing shortness of breath, cough and other symptoms. While most people recover from pneumonia without any lasting lungs damage, the pneumonia associated COVID-19 may be severe even after the disease has passed. Lungs injury may result in breathing difficulties that might take months to improve. Now what about the acute respiratory distress syndrome or ARDS? As COVID-19 pneumonia progresses, more of the air sac becomes filled with the fluid leaking from the tiny blood vessels in the lungs. Eventually, shortness of the breath sets in and can lead to acute respiration distress syndrome. As the form of lungs failure, patients with ARDS are often unable to breathe on their own and may require ventilation support to help circulate oxygen in the body through the external supply. The viral works by damaging the walls and lining of the alveolus and the capillaries. The debris from the damage which is the plasma protein accumulates on the alveoli cell wall and thicken the lining. As walls thicken the transfer of oxygen, mass transfer of the oxygen to the red blood cells is being impaired. The thicker the wall gets, the more difficult it gets to transfer oxygen to the red blood cells which causes the difficulty in breathing as the body is running short of oxygen. As the lack of oxygen to the internal organs results in the deficit in the body and impairs the functioning of the normal organs. At this junction, the body fights to increase the oxygen intake. Now what about the super infection and the sepsis? When a person with COVID-19, the immune system is worked hard to fight the invaders and that can leave the body more vulnerable to the infection with the another bacterium or virus on the top of COVID-19. A super infection and more infection can result in the additional lungs damage. What about the sepsis? The another possible complication may arise during the severe case of COVID-19 patient that is the sepsis. Sepsis occurs when an infection reaches and spreads throughout the body and the bloodstream and causing the tissue damage everywhere in the different part of the body without any anatomical or the tropism activities. The lungs, heart and other cell systems works together like the instrument with the orchestra and that's why in sepsis the cooperation between the organ falls apart. Entire organ system can start to shut down and one after another including the lungs and the heart. Sepsis even when survived can leave a patient with lasting damage to the lungs and the other organs. 
So this is the nice pictorial presentation which shows how does COVID-19 kills. How COVID-19 kills acute respiratory distress syndrome ARD in the lungs disease triggered by the COVID-19. For people with ARDS lungs filled with the fluid, breathing becomes impossible and oxygen level goes down. Only cure is time is the artificial supply of oxygen externally to improve the breathing for the patient until the inflammation fluid subsides. Number one point is the oxygen enters the lungs, alveolar air sac that exchanges oxygen and carbon dioxide. Then oxygen passes through the air sac and entering the blood. Oxygenated blood flows to the heart and then to the rest of the body. Finally, breathing with COVID-19, inflammatory cells pour into the lungs and thickening the membrane and the suffocating the alveoli and oxygen cannot reach the blood. So without the oxygen, organs completely get failure. That's why COVID-19 kills the cells, not only the alveolar system in the lungs as well as multi-organ failure can also be taken place as a secondary infection. Then what are the three major factors which are responsible for the coronavirus lungs damage? Number one is the disease severity. The first is the severity or severeness of the coronavirus infection itself. Whether the person has a mild case or the severe ones, uh, that, that depends on the less likely to cause the lasting scare in the lungs tissue. Second one is the health conditions. The second is whether there are existing health problems such as the chronic, the obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD or the heart disease that can raise the risk for the severe disease. Older people are more vulnerable for severe case of COVID-19. Their lungs tissue may be very very less elastic and weak and they have the weakened immune power because of the advanced of ages. Third one is the treatment. Treatment is the third important factor. The patient's recovery and the long-term lung health is going to depend on what kinds of care they get and how quickly. Time support the hospital for severely ill patient can minimize the lung damage as well. What about the heart diseases associated with the COVID-19 infected patient? Today, there is no evidence that the viral responsible for the COVID-19 directly infects the heart. However, the acute inflammatory response caused by the infection of COVID-19 may worsen the cardiac function and extragarated the symptoms in patients with the heart failure. It affects the heart, especially a diseased heart that has already been struggling to get the oxygenated blood throughout the body. So the heart patient need to take additional and more reasonable precautions in order to cut down their risk. Cells in the lungs and the heart are both covered with the protein molecule called the angiotensin converting enzyme AC2 receptor. The AC2 protein is the doorway that new coronavirus uses to get enter. This is the port of entry and to get start the multiplication. The AC2 normally plays a very favorable role in protecting tissue by being anti-inflammatory. But if the new coronavirus are scoped to how somehow disable those molecules, these cells may be left unprotected when the immune system springs into the action. Now, heart patients who are considered to be at risk of increased risk of developing COVID-19 are those who have history of the heart attack or the stroke secondly the chronic heart failure valve disorders conditions that affect the heart rhythm including the arterial the fibrillations the peripheral artery diseases and the narrowed blood vessel due to the plug built up temporary or the lasting damage to the heart tissue can also be due to the several reasons these reasons include the lack of oxygen myocardialitis and inflammation of the heart and the stress cardiomyopathy etc so this is a nice pictorial presentation it shows how the heart patient who are considered to be at increased risk of developing COVID-19 how they are actually developing this acute coronary dis syndrome function or the macro uh, vascular or macro vascular endothelial dysfunction due to the SARS-CoV-2 port of entry through the endothelial cells and how they are infecting the micro vessels and coronary arteries and ultimately causes the acute coronary syndromes and dysfunctionality. Then how COVID-19 has a great impact on the brain diseases. There are also COVID-19 patients having the 
the brain strokes where the blood clot blocks the flow of blood and oxygen to the brain and some of these patients have a stroke risk factor so the stroke have been particularly severe it seems that this is because of the blood rapidly becomes thickened in covid-19 in this patient there have been multiple blood clots has been observed in the arteries feeding blood to the brain even the patient already receiving blood thinners in others there is a blood bleeding due to the weakened blood vessel perhaps inflamed by the effects of the corona virus various medium sources have been warned of the brain conditions including stroke nerve damage in the people with covid-19 infection new research has begun to unravel the range of approximate frequency of these conditions so far In the British publication or in the Brain publication the doctors identified 43 patient referred to as the specialist covid-19 neurology and the neurovascular team in London in 9th April to 15th May 2020 the two third heart definite covid-19 infection confirmed by the viral test and the reminder made the world health organization case definition for the definite probable or possible covid-19 the patient ranges in age from 16 to 85 years and 56% belongs to male and 53% belongs to the non white ethnicities the patient presented in the fine distinct the diagnostic groups number 1 12 had inflammatory conditions of brain and central nervous system and uh, with the signs of bleeding in severe cases 10 patient had some form of temporary brain disturbance associated with disorders in thinking and confusion but no abnormalities on the brain scan or the lumbar puncture eight had the isomatic stroke caused by the blood clot some of who have had the clot on the lungs the eight had the nervous problems which is being associated and characterized by the progressive paralysis starting in the hands and the feet five had a range of other conditions and that did not fit into these categories so there does not seem to be any association with the severity of the covid-19 respiratory symptoms so now this is the nice pictorial presentation how brain diseases get can can get accelerated if the covid-19 infected patients are there uh, as per the neuropsychiatric manifestation in covid-19 so this is the nice pictorial how it causes the insomnia it causes the acute uh, cerebrovascular diseases infection toxic encephalitis and the hypoxia metabolic disturbances and the symptomatic inflammations in 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 the brain tissues then what about the cancer and how the cancer patient are get infected or get or has shown more severity for the covid-19 individuals with the cancer particularly those who are receiving or conceiving the systematic anti cancer treatment chemotherapy have been postulated to be at the increased level of risk of mortality from the covid-19 infection patient with the active cancer who had documented sars cov2 infection representing asymptomatic covid-19 diseases thirdly compared with the patient who had not received chemotherapy within 4 weeks of the testing positive for covid-19 those who had received recently chemotherapy did not suffer increased ameliorated mortality when analyzed by unvariated analysis 27% of death rate with the chemotherapy versus 29% death rate without the recent chemotherapy so it's very very impressive result that has been found on cancer patient who are infected with the covid-19 Now this is the continuation of the previous slide which was patient undergoing active chemotherapy patient undergoing immunotherapy or other ongoing antibody based treatment for the cancer patient undergoing other targeted cancer treatment that can affect the immune system like the PARP inhibitors or the protein kinase inhibitors patient getting intensive radiotherapy for the lung cancer patient who have had the stem cells or the bone marrow transplant in the last 6 month or who are still immunosuppressant drug users patient with the hematologic malfunctions like the lymphoma or the multiple myeloma acute and the chronic leukemia they are also at a higher risk due to the covid-19 infection future studies should investigate whether the grading of covid-19 could be further redefined to add the granularity to other understanding knowledge of heterogeneity between different tumor subtypes to clarify the risks of the specific anti cancer treatment to the discoverer where risk relating to those other specific timing of anti cancer treatment exist 
and to gain a better understanding of interactions between the host immune response and the risk for COVID-19. Some interesting questions exist surrounding the differential effects of the various anti-cancer treatment on the different component of the immune system like neutrophile, cytotoxic T cells, regulatory T cells and macrophages. How these factors will interplay with the risk of contracting SARS-CoV-2 infection or with the possibility of severe COVID-19 disease, squirrelets such as the cytokine storm is not being cleared yet. Then what about the autoimmune disorders which are being associated with the COVID-19 infection? People with autoimmune disorders have been described as a population at the more risk of the catching disease, this particular COVID-19 infection. This is due to the way the different autoimmune disorders affect their immune system and more importantly to the immunosuppressant drug used to treat most of these diseases. To know if these patients are really a greater risk of catching COVID-19 or becoming serious illness. Among with the elevated risk for the coronavirus disease COVID-19 related complications with patients with underlying medical conditions such as the diabetes, cardiovascular diseases, the individuals with the autoimmune disease may also face some risk related to their conditions and nature of their treatment. The immune system of people with diseases like the lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, malfunctions attack cells in their own bodies. This is why they are prescribed immunosuppressant drugs. The combination of these two factors means that these people are more vulnerable to the COVID-19 infection. Then what about the cytokine storm and COVID-19 infection? The re or the deregulated immune response is severe. Critically ill patient with COVID-19 seems to be associated with the cytokine storm. COVID-19 infection is accompanied by the aggressive inflammatory response with the release of the large amount of protein inflammatory cytokines in an event known as the cytokine storm. The host immune response to the SARS-CoV-2 virus is the hyperactive resulting in an excessive inflammatory reaction and accumulation of different ranges of cytokines. Reduction of the lymphocyte count called the lymphopenia have a threefold higher of developing severe COVID-19. But we have to note that the T lymphocyte cells can be subdivided into two populations according to their expression of CD4 and CD8 membrane glycoprotein molecule CD4 plus T cell which recognizes the antigen that is combined with the class 2 MSC molecule and function largely as a T helper cells and CD8 plus T cell recognizes antigen that is being combined with the class 1 MSC molecule they do function largely as a cytotoxic T cell. Interleukin 6 which has been secreted by the phagocytic cell, Th2, bone marrow, stromal cells, target cells, proliferating B cell, plasma cell, myeloid stem cell, hepatocyte function promotes the terminal differentiation into the plasma cell line. Stimulate antibody secretion helps to promote differentiation and induces synthesis of acute phase protein. Increase PCT or the procalcitonin level, the serum procalcitonin level PCT level were also over four times higher in severe patient of COVID-19 than the moderate patient were more and over eight times higher in critical patient than in the moderate patient. In death cases the serum level of PCT has also been increased as a disease cases that worsen in case of COVID-19 infection. Now this is a nice pictorial presentation how the inflammatory cytokine ARDS has been induced and causes the severe accumulation of the cytokines and causes the cytokine storm in the COVID-19 infected patients. Now we come to a conclusion. The human infection is very complex interaction between the microbes and the environment and the human host. Nowadays we experience this infection, COVID-19 infection even very well through the novel coronavirus. According to the current report from the WHO and Globular, the fatality rate of 68.29 deaths per million population whereas in India the rate is 14 0.27 death per million population. COVID-19 does not come alone, it comes with the lots of other complications for the long term or the chronic aspects. They leave some food step behind and which can become a cause of for uh, the lifelong suffering for us in upcoming years. Long but last but not the least at least recently 249 doctors and scientists have also confirmed that the COVID-19 is an airborne disease which have been declared by the WHO. So the prevention is 
none other than better than the cure to make a safe pandemic journey even in the upcoming years that we have to retain we have to survive with it so these are the few reference sections which has been included and the information or the pictorial presentation that has been shown collected from all these references uh, with the great help of my student and the group me broomies and these are the references thank you very much for your great attention and enjoy i hope you all enjoyed this session very much thank you for your great attention and we have tried to collectively represent lots of information from different resources in a collective way for all of you i hope you all enjoyed this session thank you very much for your great attention finally i would also like again all me broomies and my phd research scholar those who have involved a lot and great great involvement to make this project happen thank you very much stay home stay healthy and stay safe thank you very much